Hello everyone, Ian here again and a lovely sunny spring evening and with the uh, oilseed rape coming into uh, flower I thought I'd take the Mavic Air out for a lovely little spin this evening and uh, it kind of made me think uh, actually there might be quite a few people that haven't been flying for a good few months and uh, other people that are actually just uh, getting a Mavic Air so I thought I'd actually just uh, go through a few of the uh, more basic points useful stuff to know, useful stuff to do that generally will help you uh, have a more successful flight and uh, take some better video and not have any uh, disasters on the way. First off, let's talk about the air itself. Um, it's still my favourite drone for hiking and walking. It really is so small. Um, it, the combo comes with a fantastic little case and you can slip the remote control in as well. Um, you can get different cases. Frankly, I'm not sure uh, why, why you'd bother. Uh, as long as you don't throw it about too much, um, this is all you need, I think. And if you get a bigger case, it kind of defeats the purpose of um, having such a small drone in the first place. One of the other things to consider if you're just about to buy your drone, if uh, it comes with a, a package to take uh, to get one or two more spare batteries, uh, definitely go ahead and, uh, and grab yourself at least one, if not two spare batteries. You only get about 16, 17 minutes flying time. It will run down pretty soon. And that stops you uh, pushing the battery and taking risks. And on that, if you've got the option for a car charger, then definitely buy that as well and keep it in the car, uh, which is why I can't show it to you now because uh, it's no good keeping it on the shelf where you keep your drone because when you go out on the road, you'll realize you left the charger at home. And another little trick I do on all of my uh, drone cases, uh, if you open it up, you can see I always stick a uh, spare SD card in the, uh, in the case uh, and it is a spare SD card. Uh, you really shouldn't use it unless you have to. Uh, admittedly, the Mavic Air does come with internal memory, which you can wipe and uh, reset uh, whilst you're out on the field without a laptop. But um, again, if you haven't transferred what you recorded last time, uh, you're going to be stuck. Either way, sooner or later, you're going to get out there and realise that you've left your micro SD card in your laptop or computer, and you'll be kicking yourself if you've uh, driven a long way. So obviously, I don't need to go through the setup of the Mavic Air, uh, it's done elsewhere. But one handy little tip I would say is to uh, not worry about always fixing this little uh, phone connector into the actual arm. Uh, it's actually a lot easier to connect to the phone if you just leave it dangling. And when you're unfolding the uh, legs, uh, always uh, give the props a quick rundown, make sure none of them are actually cracked, because if they are, that will spell disaster, especially if it actually uh, uh, gets stressed whilst it's flying and uh, cracks even further. Uh, another trick of mine that I'm always forgetting is to uh, unfold the legs. Uh, they're not just for taking off, part of the antenna actually sits in the legs, so um, extending them is pretty important to increase your range. When you're powering it up, if uh, it prompts you to do a uh, compass calibration, obviously uh, go ahead and do that. It's a pretty essential part of the um, electronics. Um, it's pretty common if you've been traveling in a car, if you've traveled more than say 50 miles from your last location. I have to say for various reasons, uh, when I was in Iceland, every time I got out of the car, I had to do another camp compass calibration. Uh, you soon get used to doing the little merry dance going round uh, and then turning it down and doing another circle. Uh, but uh, don't ignore it, do do it. Also remember to double check that the sports switch uh, hasn't flicked onto sports mode. Uh, if it has, it will be uh, in sports mode uh, automatically. It'll be flying an awful lot faster than you'll be used to and the collision avoidance sensors won't be working either. So uh, it should be over to the left unless you really want to be flying in sports mode. So once everything is set up and you've got the green ready to fly, then uh, you're ready to take off. Uh, remember my advice is always to stay well above trees, buildings and people. Make sure there are no power lines anywhere. The uh, collision avoidance sensors won't pick them up and uh, you will come off worse. If it's windy, remember the golden rule, always fly out into the wind and fly home with the wind. Uh, the air actually handles wind really, really well. Um, it has uh, very clever little manoeuvres that will disable the collision avoidance sensors and allow it to go into a really steep pitch to fly into a strong wind. And that is what the uh, attitude to large message that you might see quite often remember it's not an error message it's merely telling you the collision avoidance sensors are no longer working because it's flying too steeply for the record i've often flown in 25 to 30 mile an hour winds uh, like i said fly out into it come home with it and you should be fine 
Stating the obvious, don't forget to press record. If uh, video is what you're after, you'd be amazed how many times I've done that. And uh, try and keep it in visual line of sight, which is pretty difficult when you've got such a tiny little profile. And that's where a uh, spotter will come in handy. Uh, it's always good to go flying with a friend because they will be able to uh, talk to anyone that comes up to you and not distract you. Uh, and at the same time, they can help uh, keep an eye on where uh, the drone is actually flying. So as you're flying, keep an eye on the battery symbol and also read the coloured line along the top of the screen. This is actually a really, really useful indicator. It's an active indicator that changes during the uh, duration of your flight. And it shows you how much flying time you've got left and how much time you've got before you're going to hit uh, a return to home recommendation and before you actually hit critical battery. Now the pointers will actually move depending on how far away you've got from the home point. So it's a really clever and intelligent little indicator. But remember, it's only an approximation. It doesn't know the wind direction. Hence my advice to always fly out against the wind and fly home with it so you don't get caught out. And finally, don't push the battery. Uh, remember, you don't get much flying time as it is with the Mavic Air. Critical battery will kick in quickly and it'll start forcing you to land. You can't override that and it really catches people out. Two of my friends had to go swimming in Cornwall very recently for that very reason. Don't push the battery. And then finally, when you do get the air back uh, in your hand, uh, double check it to make sure there's been no damage, make sure the, uh, the gimbal and the lens is all okay, but crucially, run your fingers along the, uh, the blades to make sure none of them got cracked uh, or, or were too stressed out whilst you were flying, and that way it'll be safe for next time. Anyway, hopefully some of that was useful stuff. Uh, remember, if you haven't been flying for a bit, take it easy, don't get distracted, and uh, just get back into the swing of things. Anyway, I'm going to capture the sunset over the flowers now. So, as ever, until next time, have fun, happy flying.